If you've never read Spurgeon, read him. Begin with the book Christ's Glorious Achievements. Very inexpensive, a paperback, great book. So whoever serves me must follow me. To follow Christ means going to the cross. It means death to self-will. Death to unkindness. You know the most influential thing in the world is kindness. I was telling Jill that I've been reading another essay by Borum who said when you're 60 you begin to soliloquise. Well, I'm a bit past that. And when I review my life, the people that stand out are the people who've been kind. Nothing has the power of kindness. Nothing. Not brilliance. The devil's brilliant. Kindness. And those of you who are married, when you're married, you made a vow to be kind. And those of you that are single and not married, be kind to the married people. They're having a hard time. <laughs> yeah. Be kind. Be kind. So Jesus says we've got to follow him and that means going to the cross, crucifying our selfishness, our passions, our meanness, our unkindness. And Jesus was hated. Be ready for that. Be ready that people throw off at you. Whoever would serve me must follow me, he said. But then my father will honour. Then there's a very important verse. 27. Now my heart is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. This is a rehearsal of Gethsemane. Gethsemane is not mentioned in John. But here's a rehearsal of it. Why is his soul troubled? Because the sin of the world is pressing upon him. Because soon he'll be separated from the Father. Soon he'll be cursed, treated as the offscouring of all things. So that's why his soul is troubled. Not his approaching death as such, or many martyrs would be better than he. He's troubled because of the weight of the sin of the world. Your sin, my sin. No, it's for this reason I came this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Three times God spoke audibly to Christ. Once when he came as prophet, baptised by John the Baptist. Once when he manifested himself as priest on the Mount of Transfiguration. And here now when he's going to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the voice speaks to him as prophet, priest and king. Not for Christ's sake, but for the sake of people that were there. <coughs> Jesus says the voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. And whenever John used the word judgment, he means condemnation. That's very important. So when you read Revelation 14, 7, 14 verse 7, and it says the hour of his judgment has come, it's not talking about a judgment on the saints. Please let us get that clear. Judgment in John's Gospel always means on the wicked and it means condemnation. So in chapter 18 and verse 10, talking about wicked Babylon, the harlot, the whore, the murderess, the adulteress, says in one hour is thy judgment come. Condemnation. Same words as 14.7. And it means the same. So now is the condemnation of the world. The cross condemned the world. The cross condemned the way most people lived. The cross condemned sin and selfishness. Condemned Satan. Then he says, but I, when I'm lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. It's a pity they've got the word men in there because it's not in the Greek. By the cross he draws the whole universe to himself. New Testament says under the principalities and powers and heavenly places is made known the manifold wisdom of God. The cross was a demonstration to innumerable worlds. You know, till the beginning of the 20th century everybody thought that what we could see in the Milky Way, that's it, that's the universe. Now we know that's one of about 400 billion Milky Ways. 
So we were a little bit out. 400 billion times out. Be careful. Put not your trust in preachers, in, in preachers, princes or scientists because none of them know it all and every one of them is often wrong. Augustine, when he was quite old, wrote a book called Retractions. <laughs> this is very humiliating. His book called Retractions cancelled out many of the things he'd written in earlier years. Well, I have to confess, I have a book that was written nearly 50 years ago, which I hesitate to lend to people because it has a few pages in it where I have left that faith, left that idea, and I have to be with Augustine. That will be among my retractions. <laughs> yeah. See? You've got to be very sceptical. Study for yourself. Give every man your ear, but not your head. Listen, study, pray. Draw all men to myself. It shouldn't have the word men there. Calvary, it's not in the Greek. Calvary would be a display to the universe, not just the Milky Way or this planet. A little further on, Jesus says, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light, for darkness overtakes you. Man who walks in the dark doesn't know where he's going. Put your trust in the light while you have it, so you may become sons and daughters of light. In other words, you're safe, you won't trip, you won't err if you do, do what you know to be right. That's walking in the light. Always turn to the right and go straight on. That's how to live. And you won't stumble. Any other way you'll stumble. Let's take a break.